All right. Kind of continuing from this last discussion, let me try to motivate what we're going to talk about here with an example. So let's define f of x to be square root of x. Now, I can evaluate it at 1 and get a perfectly reasonable answer. Square root of 1 is just 1. I can evaluate it at 0 and get a perfectly reasonable answer. Square root of 0 is 0. And I can evaluate it at minus 1 and have everything thrown into disarray. We say that this function, square root of x, is not defined or is not a real number when x is negative 1. And that's okay. I never said that every input has to have an output. I said it had to have at most one output. So having no output, like in this case, is all right. But then the question becomes, well, what values do have outputs? And this is the idea of the domain of a function. The domain of a function is simply the list of x values which have an output. Now, domain is a pain to find. It's not something that is very simple to do. But if you think about this as the only way you can fail to have an output is if you break one of the rules of math. You know? So really, all we have so far in terms of what we can't do is you can't take square roots of negative numbers. You can't have the square root of a negative number. The only other thing that we know about so far is that you can't divide by zero. So when we're looking at domain, what we want to be looking for is is it possible that we could take square roots of negative numbers? Is it possible that we could be dividing by zero? If so, then there are things that we need to exclude. There are things that aren't going, there are x values that aren't going to have an output. So, for example, earlier, we looked at the function x squared minus 2x plus 4. Very simple function. And you'll notice that there are no square roots. There's no denominators. So we can never, we're, we'll never be caught taking square roots of negative numbers, and we'll never be caught dividing by zero. Nothing can go wrong here. So, any input is going to give us an output, which means that our domain, the domain of f of x, is simply all real numbers. Or if you wish, to put this in interval notation, it's the numbers between minus infinity and plus infinity. But let's go back to that example we were just working with. f of x equals square root of x. 
Now, something can go wrong. We could take the square root of, the ne of a negative number. And the question is, when is that going to happen? Yeah. So we can take square roots of negative numbers. That's only going to happen when what's inside the radical, the x, is negative, when it's less than 0. So if x is less than 0, I'm going to be taking the square root of a negative number. It's going to have no output. I don't want these values. I only want the x values that do give me an output. So if x is not less than 0, that means we want x to be greater than or equal to 0. If it's not less than 0, then it's either greater than 0 or it's equal to 0. And this, right here, would be the domain of f. Or, if you want to write this in interval notation, it'd be 0, comma, plus infinity. But writing it like this, as an inequality, or stating all real numbers, is perfectly acceptable.